another day out in the field with the dogs. It's been about four or five days since I've been back from three days in the uh, Peak District. Feels like an anticlimax, you know, feels weird being back. So I'm just taking it easy. Plan is to go next week and do a bit of the Panama Way from not quite from Edel, just a bit higher up on the uh, Western Ridge, somewhere near Clover Rocks, just before Kinder Downfall. It's between Swine's Back and uh, Kinder Downfall. Join it there. I'll park in Aford like normal and just nip up. Um, so, I'm just recharging. The best thing to do is come back a few days off. Let your body kind of rest. You don't realise when you're doing like three days and doing like 10 to 15 miles a day. Especially when you get older. You take it out of you. First couple of days you're back you feel a bit stiff. And about fourth and fifth day I tend to feel tired. So I realise the body's catching up. Rebel, this way. Now we're not going through the gate. So... Just letting them know, it's gorgeous out. I'd say it's gone about 23 degrees. We had some rain recently. And it went kind of cool, about 18, 17, 18. But the temperatures are picking up again. <laughs> he runs like an idiot. <laughs> oh, he's still ain't mastered that. Rebel, get up! Rebel, up! He could be running, rubbing in uh, Fox Bay. Some other scent. Hey, hey! Enough. Get here. Get here. Zeets. Zeets. He's got the control off. What he does, he grabs all the soil, uh, grass with his collar. Behave yourself now. Tons and tons of attitude and character, which is good. But right, as long as it's channeled in the right way, I'll be fine. I don't know what he's just picked up there, was anybody. He now thinks he's the boss of for some reason. He isn't. Um It's a glorious day out, yeah. Right, story time. Yeah, I've I meant to tell people this and put it on video for a while it just shows how intelligent dogs are I mean this is a Belgian Malinois I'm sure German Shepherds and uh, many many other dogs like Collies and Retrievers and Labradors and so on Spaniels but uh, just regarding this story regarding the Malinois um, what about the Peak District and I've been up there weeks before probably in two three week gaps and then we had about a five week gap because of weather change so most camping spot to get the dogs used to things was uh, Fairbrook Nace on the northern side in the scout the meat district and I do it several times the same wall it's the same spot just park a uh, pitch in different spots Go to the same area. Rebel! Not too far. So, I'll give you just a say a month, you know. I, I can't remember which one it was. So, say June, right? So June we pitch out on favourite nose. And I'm with the MSR Twin Sisters. It's like a tarp scent. And I go like uh, bug net in the inner. So we pitch. Have a lovely wild camp. Pitched it in between, uh, in, in some um, gruffs. Uh, they weren't too peaty, it was more grassy gruffs these were. But still were embankments either side. Uh, just behind all the stones at the top of Fairbrook Nose. Anyway, so we go home, weather changes, we have a lot of rain, a lot of wind. And this is uh, 2016, I think it is. And I didn't have Rebel, I had Stella and I had the. Uh, 
another Belgian Shepherd, a uh, Belgian Rowandell, which is another Belgian Shepherd type. Anyway, so six weeks have passed, and I take Stella up, and I go up with the other one again, and we decide, you know, just getting used to camping, being in a tent and all that, I think I'll go favourite names again. But I picture a different spot. This time more and more in the grass because some of the ground due to recent rain was boggy and the bits that are dry were near the track and I didn't want to be near the track because of the dogs. And it, it turned very hot that day. It was about 24 degrees. This way! So what I did is I took water up and all that but I know that Fairbrook has got a good water source at the, the waterfall at the bottom at the, uh, bottom of the boulder field so down. Oh. Um, so it was a scorching day and I collected all the water I need and we got up the top and it was quite warm it was you know it was one of those evenings when the temperature did drop and the dogs were going through the water and I thought, ooh, I'm getting a bit low here. So do I nip down and just, you know, just get another two litres? Rebel? No. No. I'm trying to go through a barbed wire fence, the idiot. Cut myself to pieces. So, uh, I'm in an iron. The weather was nice. Rebel, this way. He wants to get to the water. He's the right water, baby. This way. This way! Don't let me tell you in a stern voice. Be on lead. Anyway, I'm being, being told off. So, I, I, I'm a Donard at the time, and I thought, go for it, you know what I mean? So, I was already in my shorts, and still on the short sleeve shirt. Um, so I put my boots on, I used to wear boots in days. So I thought, no one's about up here. So I can leave all my gear up here and just nip down with the dogs with a two litre soya bag. This way, I'll never get to tell the story if I keep telling them. Um, so as I was saying, I shut off and I made the deliberate mistake that all people that are supposed to experience shouldn't do. Couple of things. Never, ever, leave without first aid kit, emergency whistle, um, a means of communication, and of course, coat. Because even though I was only going like, I don't know, a quarter of a mile, I was going down to about a 600 foot drop, and it's a boulder field. Now, the point is quite simple. If I fall on the way down, I've got no, no warmth, no coat, Got no first aid kit, like emergency blanket. Got no emergency whistle to call for attention. I've got no phone. Stella, come on. Come. So, imagine I'd be at the bottom of this boulder field with my two dogs. But all I'd have in my hand is a soy of, soy of, uh, water pouch. Two litre water pouch. But that's not going to be good if I break a leg, twist an ankle, uh, crack my head, something like that. And as soon as I got down there, I realised, oh... What an idiot I've been. Because accidents do happen. And sadly, in 2016, a gentleman did slip, fall, crack his head, uh, somehow collapsed on his way, struggling back towards Snake Pass Inn, and sadly passed away and wasn't found for four days. So it does happen there, of all places. And that's the only one I've known in recent years that's had any serious accidents around there. Anyway, so there I am. I filled up this two litre soil pouch. I'm going back up with the dogs, being careful because I'm thinking to myself, I don't want no accidents because I've got no kit, nothing with me. What an idiot. Rebel! Rebel! You're getting very close to going on a lead today. Six. Do it your time now. pushing his luck today so <laughs> sorry about that um so there we go i'm going up and it's getting dusk the sun is eventually starting to set 
I've only been gone about 20 minutes, half an hour at the most. But that change of time has made the, the light go. So it's dusk and, and, you know, I can still see. But as I'm walking out, I'm thinking, because I put the, this time I had a green tent, the mountain equipment tent, I was like, where did I put the tent? <laughs> like, again, deliberate mistake, I didn't spot my location. This way, I'll go this way, there's people out there, I don't want to walk in it. So what I did, I was like, damn, because it's amongst the grass, the grass are like eight, ten feet high, so the whole point I put the tent there was to shield it. Now it's like a maze, there's hundreds of grass there. And even though it's not that far from the stones, you can zigzag in amongst the grass and easily get this way. He's following some track of some sheep. I can see the hole there now. Um, I could easily get lost. So, this is where the point of the dogs comes in. I says, says to Stella, go and find. Knowing, she will know, go and find the tent. She will know, we're going back. Trust me, the dogs know when you give them a direction like that. If, if you're... If you're looking for something or searching for someone, they'll get they'll know and they'll know you're searching for something. If you send them and say, okay, go find, they'll know you're going for your tent. Stella, go on. So I said, find, go Stella, find. She looks at her a couple of seconds and then off she goes. And she's I know she's on a mission. So I'm following her. I'm thinking, brilliant. Sorted. <laughs> Got out of this problem. And she takes me in on the grass and all that. And where does she take me to? Up the tent, she took me to the pitch spot we'd done six weeks previously. I kid you not, the very same spot because I could tell because I, there was a couple of stones I'd thrown to the side that I'd been using to uh, reinforce the pegs because it'd been windy night. So <laughs> I was like, no, not that one. <laughs> and lo and behold, I said to her, go find the other one. And she looked at me a couple of seconds and then shut off again. And lo and behold, she searched and searched and took me within, I don't know, a couple of minutes to where the, the tarp tent was, the outside the mountain equipment tent was. And if it weren't for her, I would have been struggling there for a good 15, 20, maybe even longer, looking for the tent. So my point is, how did... So I searched after online, I thought, that was no coincidence. She actually took me directly to the first spot, and then when I tried the second time, directly to the second, uh, the second spot where we were pitched. How did she remember? And she was sniffing, so I guess she was picking up scent. So when I was checking online, I was finding out that dogs can still pick up a scent up to five, six weeks, probably longer, but in some dogs, but they can pick up a scent that you've left on an area. That's why they use them for like uh, lost people and things like that. Even though it'd been raining, bad winds, we had bad weather. Rebel, get up! 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 He's going to go on the lead in a minute and going to get some training because he's starting to rule the nest here. Um, so they can pick up a scent five or six weeks after it's passed. And we dad, I mean, this is Kinder Scout. This is a place that gets really hit by strong winds. Uh, when it rains, it really does throw it down and they get hail and everything, even in the summer sometimes. So, I was amazed how she could pick up our scent in that spot. And, I, I mean, I would have been lost if it went for her. This way! He's got his crazy head on today. Um, so I was amazed, but going back to the other point, apart from the dog, just shows um, X-Forces serve with many different kind of military bits. I know better than that. I know better than clear off in a pair of boots and, and shorts and a t-shirt. But it just shows when your guard is down you think you're relaxed and you think, oh yeah, I'll just know. You don't think of the obvious. So it's a lesson learned. I mean, I could have done that. The weather could have changed. Even in summer I've been up in these places and the weather has changed within half an hour, even less sometimes. I could have slipped on a rock, injured myself, whatever it's like down there, trust me. You could be blind on a whistle and some days people don't go by for hours and hours and hours. It could go 12, 15 hours before the first 
fell runner or hiker or whatever. I could have been there all overnight without a coat, without food to without any means of communication or with something to do with attention. And I could have died of hypothermia even in summer because at night the temperature dropped down to about seven, eight degrees. But trust me, when you've only got a t shirt, you feel it. And when you're injured, they're going in shot. So, a lesson to learn. And I hope people listen, read, uh, watch this and listen to the story. Sorry about the interruptions, me telling the dogs off, but I'm hoping others listen and remember so they don't make the same mistake because luckily, nothing out. Two things I'd made a mistake on not taking the gear and also not, not marking my point on uh, either a GPS. Here, Rebel! Rebel! Smack you a bit of it. Get down there. Down. Pushing these left. Get braver and braver about a minute. I'd not marked my point. Now, if I didn't have the dogs and the weather changed, got really nasty. Say I had all my kit with me, I would not have been able to find the tent for about a good half hour, maybe even longer. So it just shouts don't make stupid mistakes. Don't switch off. Don't go for the shortcut. In your head, you know, oh, I just nipped down. It's not like you're popping to the local shop. So, a lesson learnt. I won't be doing that again. So, always take, I mean, I have a dog pack. There was no reason why I couldn't put the dog pack on there, took the food out, so it's light, and just kept the first aid kit and my coat or whatever in, in the dog pack. Yeah, yeah. No reason I couldn't have done that. Laziness, tiredness more than anything, probably from the height, and laziness because I was thought, oh, I just nipped down. Things like that don't happen. That's how mistakes happen. So, yeah. So, the, going back to the other point, uh, how does a dog pick up a scent after about five, six weeks? Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Potato, the fan off a potato. Fingers a ball. Um, this way, this way, this way, this way. Else, I've got my cheeky heads on today, haven't I? <laughs> uh, that's why you have to be a strong personality with these dogs. Sometimes they'll come out and they've got their like crazy heads on. But going back, yeah, sorry, I interrupted again because of them. How do dogs remember scent? five or six weeks ago in a place that's hit by bad weather. Six. I am going to smack your head in a bit. You're pushing your luck to behave it. <laughs> like treating kids, isn't it? So, yeah, it's amazing. Really, really got to be that did how a dog could actually go in and out the grass and take it to the spot that we'd been six weeks earlier and she looked at me with a great big smile on her face like smirk on her face saying I've done it congratulations and I went no <laughs> and she just seen the look there and she was like kind of hesitant like what so not that one the other one <laughs> the one where the tent is and lo and behold she rushes off zigzags in and out of these grass and finds the tent after about two or three minutes. I couldn't have done that. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, I hope you enjoyed that story. Until next time, I'm going to now discipline my dog. <laughs> He's going to go beat up the bump now. He's just in his one of his cocky bits. I want to, I want characters to come out. Right, we're going. Yeah, see, look, he's listening, he's in. It's probably because he's getting bored because I'm chatting to, you, to, the, to my Android phone while I'm filming. Rebel, get here. Yes, you. See, he's good and all that. He knows what to do. He, he likes to tweak the boundaries at times. Right, I'm going. Hope you enjoyed the story. I found it quite amazing when it happened. Right, until next time. Goodbye.